As you watch this teaching, I would like to ask you to please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it. My name is Rick Renner, and today I'm giving you a tour of our Moscow TV offices. On this wall is the camera we first used when we started our TV ministry nearly three decades ago. And when I look at it, I'm amazed because it was a home video camera. But in this part of the world, there were not a lot of new high-tech equipment. So this was considered really advanced equipment back in those early days. And with this primitive camera, we began to film programming that was shown all over the former Soviet Union and tens of thousands of people got saved through programs filmed on this little camera. And that's why it's hanging on our wall. It's not just decoration, it is very precious to us. I think about Job chapter eight, verse seven. It says, your beginning may have been small, but your end is fabulous. You know, when we all get started, we feel like we're starting very small. We may even think that our beginning is very primitive and we might even be embarrassed about how we're beginning, but you have to begin somewhere. And if you're faithful with your beginning, God will keep blessing you and blessing you and enabling you and enabling to finally, you'll become something significant. And when I look at this camera, I think about Job chapter eight, verse seven, though your beginning was small. Can you believe that was our beginning? In the end, it'll be all different. And my friends, if you'll be faithful with what God has put in your hand to do right now and use the resources you have, God will take it and make it something amazing. He'll make it fabulous. But that's why this camera hangs on the wall of our Moscow TV offices. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insight and understanding from the Word of God. Here's Rick. Welcome to the program. This is Friday, and I'm already praying that you're going to have a great weekend. And if you need somebody to pray with you before the weekend begins, hey, call us right now. We're waiting to take your call or to receive your email. As soon as it shows up in our inbox or as soon as we get your call, we're going to really begin to pray with you. I don't know what you're dealing with this weekend, but let us pray with you or pray with you about anything that is on your heart. I'm amazed by how many people go to church every single week, but they don't feel they can open their hearts with the people they sit next to in church. So they call us for prayer, but I'm so glad they can call us. And if you don't have anybody to pray with you, please contact us. We're waiting to hear from you and we would really love to pray with you. And by the way, we're offering you my series, which is called Pastoral Ministry. It's five parts. This has been so rich. Right now, I'm doing a whole series on five-fold ministry. And this week, every day this week, we've been looking at the role of the pastor and what is the pastor's ministry. This would be great for you to share with a friend or to use in a Bible study or just to hear again and again and again so you really understand your pastor or maybe you feel called to pastoral ministry. This would be a great education for you. And it comes with a study guide and the two of them together are such a dynamic package. And right now we're also offering you today for the very last time this week, my book called Chosen by God. The foreword is by Joyce Meyer. I just wanted to read to you one thing that Joyce said. She said, in Chosen by God, that's this book, Rick has clearly established that many are called but few are chosen. Rick exposes all the requirements necessary to say yes to and to fulfill your God-given destiny. And in this book, you will learn the indispensable qualities needed for you to do what God has called you to do. You'll be provoked to discipline and encouraged to obedience by the truth shared in this book. I really believe that as well. So please order your copy today. And remember that when you become a partner with our ministry, we immediately send you a package of books as our way of saying, welcome to the partner family. And together, we're taking this teaching to people all over the planet. In fact, just today, before I came and sat in this chair, I got a report about all the people around the world that are tuning in 
to listen to the teaching of the Bible. And the comments are just amazing. They're coming in from every nook and cranny of the whole planet. They're sitting in front of their devices, and their computers, feeding on the Word of God, and they're so thankful. And the reason they're able to do that is because partners put gas in the tank when they give their monthly financial contributions. It enables us to really take this teaching all over the world. Proverbs 10, 21 says, The lips of the righteous feed many, and that's what we do with the help of our partners. But hey, reach for your Bible. And today we're going to wrap up the teaching on pastoral ministry. In the first program this week, we saw statistics about pastors that were really quite alarming. If you didn't hear that program, please go to the archives or order the series. In the second program, we saw God's expectation of pastors as described in Ezekiel chapter 34. In the third program, we saw God's charge to pastors that is clearly described in Acts chapter 20. Yesterday, we saw God's reward for pastors. One day, Jesus is coming, and the Bible says He's going to give a crown of glory to those pastors who did what they're supposed to do and who did it with the right attitude. And today, we're going to wrap it up by finding who is God's choice of a pastor for you? How do you know your pastor's voice? This is a very important question. So reach for your Bible. And today we're going to go to John chapter 10, where Jesus describes pastoral ministry. And we're going to begin in verse 10, then we're going to jump back to verse 3. But when you come to John 10, verse 11, Jesus describes himself as the good shepherd. And my friends, Jesus is the perfect shepherd. There's never been a better shepherd. He is the chief shepherd. And so we need to hear what Jesus had to say about pastoral ministry. And look at what he says beginning in John 10, verse 11. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. There's a lot in this verse, so let's unpack it. First of all, Jesus says he is the good shepherd. In Greek, it says, ho poimen, ho kalos. You say, what in the world does that mean? Well, I'm going to tell you the word poimen is the word for a shepherd. The word kalos is the word for something that is excellent or something that is superior. But when these two words are used together, the way they're used in this verse, it's really important because a definite article is repeated twice. The Greek literally says, I am the shepherd, the good one. The shepherd, the good one. Because it has a definite article, Jesus is lifting his voice. He's making a very strong statement. He is saying, I am the shepherd, the good one, the best one, the best example of all. The word shepherd, the word poimen, describes one who feeds, protects, and rules a flock of men. The word poimen describes this shepherd. The word kalos describes one that is superior or one that is excellent, the best above and beyond all others. So Jesus really here says he is the good one the most excellent one, the one who is the supreme example above all others. Jesus says, I am the shepherd, the really good one. Jesus says that about himself. That's amazing to me. And then he continues, and he says, the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. The word giveth is a very poor translation because the Greek word is tithemi. The word tithemi means to be established or to be set in place. It's the same word which the Apostle Paul used in Acts 20, verse 28, when he said, The Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, hath made is the same word, tithemi. It means to be established or to be positioned. And here Jesus says, The good shepherd's life was established for one purpose. Or Jesus says, I have been given in my pastoral ministry to do one thing. I've been established. I've been purposely set in place as the shepherd, the really good one, to give my life for the sheep. The word life is the word suke. Now there are several words that could have been used for life. It could have been the word bias, which would have described your biological life. It could have been the word zoe, which could have described a spiritual life. But those words are not used here. Rather, it is the word suke. The word suke is where you get the word psychology, but suke really means the soul, the mind, the will, the emotions, and hence all that one is. 
So Jesus says, my life has been established that I might give it entirely, entirely for the sheep. The word for is not the word dia, which would have been translated on behalf of, but rather the word hupo. And the word hooper here means on behalf of, entirely on behalf of the sheep. Jesus says, my life was established. I have been sent for one express purpose that I might give all that I am for the sheep. And because he did it so fully, Jesus says he was the good shepherd. The Greek says, hopoimen, hokalos, the shepherd, the good one, the best, the best example of all. That is what Jesus said about himself. Jesus really is the good shepherd. Can you say amen? Now, let's go back to verse 3. And in verse 3, Jesus begins to give us principles about how to recognize the voice of your earthly shepherd, how to recognize your pastor. Listen to what he says beginning in verse 3. The sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his sheep by name, and leadeth them out. When Jesus says the sheep hear his voice, the word hear is the Greek word akuo. The word akuo means to hear, to comprehend, to perceive, even to recognize, it's where we get the word for acoustics. The Greek word is akuo. Can you hear the word acoustics? But here Jesus is giving us a principle. Sheep have the ability to comprehend the voice of the one who is supposed to be their shepherd. They can recognize the voice of their shepherd. In fact, the verse actually says the sheep hear his voice. Listen to what the Greek says. The Greek says tes phones Auto. Auto is very important because it means they hear the voice of him, the voice of him. It implies a clearly recognizable voice of their own unique shepherd. They hear the voice of their shepherd and they're able to perceive it. They're able to distinguish it. They're able to really recognize it. They know the voice of him that is supposed to be their shepherd. Let's use me as an example. I'm not supposed to be everybody's pastor in the city of Moscow. People are to attend our church. People are to attend other churches. The people who really hear my voice, they feel attracted to me. They love me. They follow me. They want to hear me. But there are some people who come to our church and they really don't hear my voice. They're not interested. They're not attracted to me. But they're very attracted to the voice of another pastor. That's because they hear his voice. They recognize his voice. They recognize his authority. And that's who they're supposed to follow. And that's all right. You know, when I was a boy, my mother used to say to me, Rick, you can never be everybody's cup of tea. Well, in the same way, no pastor is everybody's pastor. You are pastor to those who recognize your voice. Just like with this TV program. There's some people who tune on, they don't get anything out of it. Other people tune in, and my goodness, they are hooked on every word. They want to hear everything that I have to say. That's because God has created a relationship between me and those hearers. We have a relationship. They're able to hear my voice, and therefore I have a voice to speak into their life. It's a spiritual connection. But you don't have that with everybody. And Jesus said sheep are able to hear the voice of the one that is designed to lead them. And the verse says, the shepherd calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When the Bible says he calls, the Greek word phaneo means it is a hearable sound or a hearable signal. Sheep are able to hear the voice of the one who has authority to speak into their life. Wow. And he calls his own sheep. The Greek literally says his own unique sheep. Those that have a connection with him, he calls them by name, by name implies that there's some kind of a relationship, a spiritual relationship, or there's a supernatural connection between a pastor and those that he is supposed to lead. And the verse says, he leadeth them out. Leadeth them out in Greek really means to lead out or to lead out of a harmful environment or to lead into better pastures. Wow. Verse 4. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Wow. 
When the verse says, he goeth before them, it is a Greek word, improsten. The word prosten describes the faith, the word face. The word M means to be in front of. It describes an out front position. He's right in front of their faces. They recognize his voice. They see him. He's right in front of them. He has a place of leadership in their life. He is visibly leading them. And the verse says the sheep are willing to follow him. The word follow here is a Greek word, akaluthio, which means to follow to go somewhere with a person, to go somewhere with a person, to accompany another person on a journey. Oh, I love that. To tirelessly accompany someone, to constantly be at the side of an individual, to always be in close proximity with someone else, to follow like a traveling companion, to follow after someone in a very determined and purposeful manner. Wow. When you have a spiritual connection with a leader, you want to go on a journey with him. You want to follow him. You want to be at his side. You want to hear what he has to say. You see, there's a divine, supernatural connection. You recognize his voice. He has authority to speak into your life. That is a voice that you want to follow. That's one way you're able to recognize your pastor or those who have authority to speak into your life. This is so very important. You will have a desire to follow that person and to go on a spiritual journey with them. And the Bible clearly says the sheep know his voice. Wow. The word know is the Greek word oida. The word oida means to see, to perceive, to understand, to comprehend. They really comprehend this is the voice of the one that has authority and should have authority to speak into my life. They know his voice. The Greek again says exactly tes phones auto. There's that word auto again. It has a definite article. It means they know the voice of him. They know his voice. And it implies a clearly recognizable voice of the one who is to be their own unique shepherd. You know, sometimes I hear other pastors and I think, I don't know why anybody would even go to that man's church. I don't know why anybody would listen to that person because I get nothing out of what they have to say. But the people who attend that church, oh my goodness, they love it. They love every word that he has to say. They hang on every word. They love him. They love his wife. They love his family. They love everything about him. You know why? Because he is their pastor. They have a connection with him. Then I'll hear somebody else, and my goodness, I think they are so marvelous. You know why? That person has a voice to speak into my life. I have a spiritual connection with that person. And likewise, when God has given you a pastor, you will have a connection with that individual. It will be a supernatural connection. You will know his voice. And verse 5 says, and a stranger they will not follow. The word stranger is a Greek word for a foreigner, an alien, somebody that is different, strange, unfamiliar, unknown. A voice of a stranger they will not follow. Will not in Greek is very strong. It's a double negative. Literally, no, never, in no way, not ever will they follow. They have no desire to follow the voice of one that they can't connect to. It's really what it means. But, the word but in Greek is the word all. It means but on the contrary, they will flee from him. The word flee, the Greek word fuoge, which means to move your feet as fast as you can. The word from is the word op, which is a form of the word apo. It means to put distance between yourself and somebody else. You'll want to get away from that church, get away from that individual. It's not that they're bad. You'll just feel, well, I'm not supposed to be here. This is not where I'm supposed to be. It's a spiritual sense of who you're to be connected to and who you are not to be connected to. For they know not the voice of a stranger. This is so very powerful, my friend. Now I'm going to give you seven signals, seven signals to help you recognize the voice of your pastor or the voice of those that are supposed to be speaking into your life. I'm going to give you seven signals. Are you ready? 
Write these down. Number one, seven signals to recognize the voice of your pastor or one that is supposed to be speaking into your life. Number one, you will have a spiritual connection to him. That is exactly what Jesus is teaching in these verses. Number one, you will have a spiritual connection to him. Number two, you will have a desire to hear more from him. You'll want to hear his voice because you have a connection with it. You get something out of it. You'll want to hear more from him. Number three, you will have a sense of security by being under his authority. You'll know that you're in the right place. You'll know that you're in a safe place. You'll know that under his voice and under his leadership, you have spiritual security. Finally, number four, you'll have a supernatural desire to honor him. When a person is supposed to be your pastor or speak into your life, you'll have a desire to honor that individual. Number five, you will have a drawing to follow his leadership. You'll want to follow that individual. You'll say, wow, I want to go on a spiritual trip with this man or this person. I want to follow this person. Let's go on a journey. You'll want to stick closely to that individual. You will have a drawing to follow his leadership. Number six, you'll have a desire to serve alongside of him or to help him in whatever way that you can. That's why some people have a desire to be our partners and other people do not. That's all right. But if you have a desire to be our partner, that means God has designed a connection between us. And when you're really called to receive from someone and to be under their spiritual authority, you will have a desire to serve alongside of that person. And number seven, you will have a willingness to be corrected by him if needed. That's a very important point because sometimes shepherds have to bring correction to the flock. So let me read these again. Number one, you will have a spiritual connection to him. Number two, you'll have a desire to hear more from him. Number three, you'll have a sense of security by being under his ministry. Number four, you'll have a supernatural desire to honor him. Number five, you'll have a drawing to follow his leadership. Number six, you'll have a desire to serve alongside of him. And number seven, you'll have a willingness to be corrected by him if needed. Those are seven signals to help you recognize the voice of your pastor or the one that is supposed to speak with authority into your life. But my friend, the best example of a pastor above and beyond anybody else is Jesus himself. And that is why Jesus so clearly said in John chapter 10, verse 11, let me read it to you again. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. Jesus is the best shepherd of all. And he is the example of all other pastors. He is the chief shepherd. And one of these days he's going to come and he's going to give a crown of glory to every pastor that has done a good job with a great attitude. We're out of time, but I'll be back in just a moment and I wanna pray for you. The Bible says God gave the gift of pastor to the church and that this gift is needed for the body of Christ. It is vital for you to understand what a pastor is. Is it possible that a pastor is much more than you realize or that your view of the pastoral gift is tainted by a traditional church background? In the five-part series, Pastoral Ministry, Rick Renner reveals why God gave the pastoral gift to the church. You'll find out why you need a pastor, how to find your pastor, and how you and your pastor should relate to each other according to the teaching of Scripture. Rick Renner will show you how to recognize a true pastoral gift, how to know the voice of your pastor, how to work successfully with a pastor in the local church, how to correctly honor a local pastor, and so much more. This series is jam-packed with insights to help you know more about the pastor God has given you. Available in digital or physical formats, starting at just $10, you'll be so glad you took time to digest this powerful series. In addition, you can also purchase the book Chosen by God. In this book, Rick will prove to you beyond any shadow of a doubt that God's hand is on you and He wants to do something marvelous with your life. The book Chosen by God can be yours for only $18. Don't miss this special offer, this series Pastoral Ministry and the book Chosen by God. Call the number on your screen now or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now.
My name is Joel Renner, coming to you right from Moscow, Russia. And I want to tell you about the certain outreaches of our ministry that we do here in Russia. You know, people need help, but more importantly, people need Jesus. And in these outreaches that we provide, people can have both. They can receive help and Jesus. For decades, we have been able to touch millions of lives with the gospel of Christ and the love of God. We've been privileged to do this through broadcasting Christian television programs all over the world, starting churches that are thriving to this day, visiting orphanages with gifts for children and the workers, visiting prisons to minister hope in God's Word, visiting mental institutions to share the freedom that is found in Christ, equipping graduates of our Bible seminary so they can go out and help others, reaching thousands through our Internet Good News Church with Bible teaching and spiritual care. Because of you, we are able to take the gospel of Christ both to our nearby world and to the ends of the earth. Please call or go to renner.org to make a financial donation so that through your giving, we can continue to make this huge difference in people's lives. This week, we began by looking at statistics about pastors. Then we saw God's expectation of pastors. We saw God's explicit charge to pastors, God's reward for pastors. And today we've been studying about how you can recognize the voice of your pastor. And we discovered that when a person is supposed to have pastoral authority or spiritual authority in your life, you will recognize that person's voice. You'll have a supernatural connection with them and a desire to follow them, to obey them, and to go on a spiritual journey with them. I think this is so helpful. By the way, I'm speaking to you from my series, which is called Pastoral Ministry. It's five parts. It comes in multiple formats with a great study guide. And we're also offering you today for the last time this week, my book called Chosen by God. The subtitle says, God has chosen you for a divine assignment. Will you dare to fulfill it? And I want to remind you that if you need prayer, we're here for you. The weekend is about to begin. So please let us pray with you before you launch out into your activities this weekend. We want God's peace and God's power to be with you, whatever you're going to do. So call us or write us and let us know how to pray for you. But let me pray for you right now. Father, I know people want to be in the right place and under the right pastor. So Father, I pray that you give every person listening to me today the ability to discern their pastor's voice, and when they discern it, to serve with him, to serve alongside of him. I pray, Lord, they'll be blessed in that place, and that man or that spiritual leader will speak with authority into their life, and it will be a blessing to them. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, it's been a good week. I'll see you on Monday. But until then, remember Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, there is power. Rick Renner Ministries is proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ through every available media to the uttermost parts of the earth. Discover the many ways you can help us make a difference in lives around the world with the Word of God. We invite you to partner with us in teaching, strengthening, and rescuing lives for the glory of God. Together, we can make a difference that will last throughout eternity. If that teaching helped you, would you please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it.